Hi, today is all about traveling and how I prepare my animals for long trips. Welcome to my channel. I'm the Outdoor Witch. Outdoor lover, animal intuitive, energy healer, I'm the owner of several animal friends. Today I'm going to share with you all the things I do to prepare my animals um, for long trips and this video will be done with my other self on my other uh, YouTube channel, The Striders Adventures, where uh, I will take you more into the details of how I prepare the logistics to travel with animals. In this video I'm going to share with you how I prepare them um, mentally for traveling and also the training uh, for the dogs, for the cats, and I will tell you also by my horse how I prepared all of them for traveling. This video is premiered on the day we are actually leaving for Finland. So we are now currently in Switzerland and we are moving all the tribe uh, to Finland. So this is the third time, fourth time I'm going to do that trip. Uh, we only came back here with the nine dogs once. Uh, previously, I've done the trip with two dogs, a horse and a cat. And um, we came back, it was like three, two months ago, with the nine dogs and the cat back to Switzerland. And now it's time to go back to Finland for winter. So we have to prepare the whole tribe uh, for that long journey. So it's quite challenging things because there are uh, different animals with very different temper. I got um, six sled dogs, two huskies, but I don't consider them as sled dogs at all. And we have Sparta, who's now 10 years old. She's a mixed bred dog. And we have also Milwin, my three-legged cat. So I'm going to take you to them and tell you, uh, you know, on the go, how it goes for preparing them and training them for a long trip. The trip we're gonna go on is a 3,000, more than 3,000 kilometers long. It's gonna be quite rough because you know of the COVID um, measures, we have to, to do the first section quite rapidly. And then we're gonna take some time in Sweden to enjoy um, some, let's say, half time, a little holiday before uh, getting to Finland. If you're interested in that part, you can also follow us on the Striders Adventures, the YouTube channel. I link, I put the link below in the description box and I will post their videos on the trip itself. So now let's go to visit the tribe. Uh, I can't wait to introduce them to you. So first, let me take you to Milwin. Uh, Milwin is our three-legged cat. She has kind of an history <laughs> with her. It's been uh, quite a lot of adventures. But uh, I really love that little witch. She's amazing. And um, we actually found her uh, at the stables where I had my horse earlier on here in Switzerland. Uh, she was only three weeks old, like really tiny little kitty. I found her uh, in the middle of these big hay balls and she was, you know, on, flat on the floor and she was crying everything she could. And uh, so I had to climb up and I found this tiny tiny little kitty and uh, she lived she she survived we had to feed her on the bottle for something like two weeks and uh, and so since then she's been with us uh, she was born with four legs but she had an accident uh, she's been shot um, that was quite a nightmare I, I've, I've told her story already before uh, if you're interested I can also put the link in the description box but uh, the nice thing is that is she's now totally fine. She's doing amazing with her three legs and she doesn't remember anything anymore. Um, so with Milwin, I've told her since the beginning, I mean, since the first day I, uh, we got her, I told her that we were a family that was traveling a lot and she was meant to come with, along with us if she wanted to, but that I wouldn't like to leave her home alone. Uh, so I think she was maybe one month, one and a half month when we first went traveling. And since then, she's been with us everywhere. Uh, she's been in Slovenia, she's been to France many times, Germany, Finland many times, Sweden, Denmark. Um, yeah, we've been quite a few places with her and, and she's amazing. She really enjoys it. You, you should see when uh, we get the stuff ready, like now I'm starting to pack. 
and, and she knows, she totally knows what's going on. And uh, she's checking what I'm doing. She loves the travel, like going in the car and moving to one place to the other. And she knows also at night, in the evening, when we're going to stop for her to, to spend the night somewhere, she absolutely knows. She starts to get excited. She looks outside and she has to go and make a little tour and come back to the car. So she, she's quite a character. And, uh, um, you know, since I've had her, I've, all, I've heard so many people saying cats don't like to travel. Uh, I mean, it depends if they have the habit since they are kitten to be moved to one place to the other it's it's just their life that's what they know so so Milwin is really attached to the family uh, she would just come back to the place she knows and it's us or the car so that's just huge it's amazing because um it, it I mean I know she will always come back to the car uh, also when I travel with her she has a GPS on she get a chip so we make sure she can't get stuck somewhere. We we cannot lose her or whatever. I think it's for my own um, how can I say peace of mind because I know she's never far. She's talking to me. She's saying she's fine. She's hunting. She's doing this and that. But you know sometimes it's good to have like tangible things. And I know she's there. And when you have to pack the camp and move, I know I can just go and pick her up without problem. So we get this funny cat. Now on to the dogs. Let's start with Sparta. She's 10 years old now and she is my first expedition dog. Her and her sister Nyx, my lovely Nyx, uh, we did a lot of very long trips and hikes um, in the north of uh, Sweden and Finland. Um, yeah, we've done like lots of kilometers together. One of my expedition was called Hiking for the Arctic and we went there for a long time doing 700 kilometers together in 21 days. So that was a big one. And um, so Sparta and Nix are also rescued pups. Um, and now we still have Sparta and she's, um, she's really used to travel. I mean, she knows that the car is the place to be. So whenever she's a bit scared of something or she's feeling unsafe, she goes to the car. Uh, where whenever there's um, an open car somewhere, she would she would rather jump there than you know staying outside. So she just loved the car, and since she's a pup, and that's the place she can feel safe. She loved the travel box. Um, she just go inside. We don't need even a gate because she just stays and she's happy inside the the, the fly box. So uh, that's very convenient. But I've trained them, her and Nick, since the beginning that the fly box were, were their safe place. When they were pups, we had another dog who was not so nice. And I was not so much into dog communication, not, not that good, let's say. And so with Mufasa, um, later on called Titi, he, he would be aggressive to them when they were really young, like two or three months old. So um, we put them in this fly box for a long time and like, you know, every night or when we wanted them to feel safe. So the fly box has become their safety place. Um, they, they know they're fine there, which is amazing because now wherever we travel, uh, even when we had to take the plane with the dogs, they just went in this fly box, no problem. I mean, that's the place they know. And they were totally chilled. So this is really convenient. And since they've been with us everywhere, I mean, really everywhere, uh, I mean, these dogs uh, were meant to, were meant for traveling, and that's the way I proceed with all my dogs. Uh, I tell them everything. I just tell them ahead what's going to happen, what we're going to do, and I don't only tell them. I also send them mental pictures, because if you tell a dog, "Yeah, we're going to travel to Switzerland, and it's going to be like this and this," and you don't make any picture in your mind. Um, if your dog has never been anywhere else, it doesn't. Un it's not that he doesn't understand you, but he can't make any picture. He can't imagine what you, what you're talking about. He can't represent it. So I always send mental pictures to them when I, I do my speech. I, I tell them what's going to happen, and that's the way I prepare all the dogs and the cat and the horse as well. So. Like um, the Bob, Quint, Sparta, Nix, and now the six sled dogs we've adopted. I just proceed the same way. I tell them exactly what's going to happen uh, as, you know, in the long term, like the whole trip. What's the point of it? 
and then I every day I repeat. So today we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to drive about X hours, then we're going to make a break, and then we're going to drive again and stop for the night. Or, you know, I, I tell them exactly as you would for kids. And just don't don't hesitate to repeat and repeat again. I don't think you're a fool. Just think that they understand you and it makes them more um, comfortable. They know what to expect. And, you know, by experience, what they're going to live is going to match the pictures you send them. And so they're going to get it. Oh, travel means this. And so every time you go traveling again and again, uh, for them, it's like, oh, yeah, we've done this, I remember. And you can send them the pictures of the previous trip. So I think it's it's very important to tell them in details what's going to happen. It takes off a lot of pressure and stress from your animals in general. Uh, Bob and Quint were pretty easy with traveling. The, the video on Quint is going to be published soon. Uh, is the next video coming, actually. Um, I had some issue at the beginning because he was so scared of being uh, inside a closed space. Uh, but he understood rather quickly that when he was going in that car, it meant we would go to a pleasant, you know, like to a nice place. We would go for a walk or to something he enjoyed doing. So I knew he was listening to me, but he couldn't really make any nice picture out of it. He couldn't represent it in a nice way for him. There was too much stress. And uh, now he really enjoys it. It's amazing, especially uh, after the work we've done with him this summer. Now he really appreciates traveling, um, which is great because we are travelers. So I need my animals to to be fine and comfortable with this. Now with the, the six other dogs that we adopted last winter, I never had travel, traveled with them before uh, this long trip. But we did two uh, shorter trips before in, in Finland. One was for a race that I did with the, the four girls, but I took all the dogs as a training just to see how they went, you know, how, if it was okay for them to be in the boxes, how they reacted. And um, I noticed that actually the three shy ones that I was more, you know, doubtful about uh, actually felt really good in the boxes. One, uh, Vinku, was a bit more... Um, I, I would say a bit scared, you know, at the beginning, but it, it just very quickly understood that, okay, we go there, it's fun, I stay with my pack, I stay with mom, it's nice, uh, we do nice, pleasant things. So that was a lot easier than I thought. And the three other girls, they are the females are really young, they're only two, they come from a very good kennel, good background, so for them it was just like something new, just to play a game. So it was not hard uh, to train them to enjoy it. It was just a matter of doing it in the nice way, the proper way, so they didn't get any bad experience and rather would enjoy it more. Um, so that was that was really easy with these girls and they're amazing dogs and you know they have great temper. I love them, they're super smart. So for, with them, it was like really sending them the pictures mentally uh, and they would just get things so quickly. So it's a bit of part of a communication and also training. And then the communication matched the training and vice versa. And it just goes super smoothly. I, I you know, I don't know now how this trip is going to go, but I've been doing these trips since 2015 with a lot of animals. And it always goes so well. I mean, it's just amazing. I think often the dogs, uh, the dogs, the horse, the cats, they surprise me more. Um, I, I'm more impressed about them than about me. I'm, I'm like, wow, they just handle it. Like, it's so easy for them. So, yeah, uh, it, it really works. And also, you have to trust them that they're going to be fine. And that's another issue. We tend not to trust our animals that they can handle things. We we worried, we overreact, over worry about them or their ability to deal with things. But they're super smart and they get things super quickly. So if you are okay, you're relaxed, you're chilled, your animals are just gonna thrive. Now the second trip we did with the the yeah the eight dogs uh, in Finland was just a test drive the day before. Or two days before we left Finland for this 3,000 kilometers drive, uh, we went out for one night and uh, just to see how we would handle things. Because that's 
um, something I'm going to talk more in the video uh, with the Striders Adventure because it's a lot about logistics. But we actually try everything, so we are not uncomfortable with the dogs. We are, we know what we do. We know how to take them out of the the boxes into this take out this chain where we have all the dogs uh, tied to it. So because with nine dogs, you need to have a, a mean to put them all outside and so they can enjoy being outside a bit in the safest way possible. They can eat there, they can drink, um, they can still move because they have enough uh, room around them. So yeah, we had to, to try all this and we did that. And so it allowed us to see that some things were not completely okay. We had to adapt this, change a bit that. Uh, and then the dogs are like um, really chilled and, uh, and enjoying the longer trip because they've done it once. They've understood what you meant when you were trying to explain with your words and image. And uh, for them, it, it's like, oh, okay, that's it. That's all she's, she's meaning by this. Uh, no big deal. We can do this. So that's the way I, I train dogs. Um, the cat, I mentioned her before. And now with the horse, because horse is a bit different and probably would require an entire video. But uh, to keep it short, my horse, Ola, and she's now in Finland, so I'm super happy to go back and see her because I miss her. Uh, we talk every day, but, you know, still, I can't touch her the same way. So um, the first long trip I did with Ola was in Slovenia. So we left from Switzerland to spend one month in Italy and Slovenia traveling around and going to different places and everything. So I was alone with two dogs, a cat and uh, Ola. And I wasn't sure she would be okay to go like this and sleep outside. And I had never done this before with her, so I wasn't too sure. And so I started communicating and asking her, are you all right? And I felt like she was okay, but there was something troubling her. So I went a bit deeper and tried to figure out what it was. And I was always seeing, like, she was showing me the stable. So then I was like, okay, um, maybe, are you worried that we're not coming back here? And actually that was okay. She was worried she would not see her friends anymore. So I explained that it was a trip, it was holidays, we're going to visit places, go to other stables, you're going to stay in different places every two or three nights, and then we're going to come back here in, after a month. And... Um, and I felt that there were no resistance anymore. I, I was really, I was really feeling good, and uh, and she was amazing. That trip was amazing. This horse is just like wow. Okay, she was meant to travel too. Um, she was loading in the in the trailer on her own oh, because I was alone. So really, I had my horse to be really easy to handle. You know, when you have a cat and two dogs, all of them want to be the first one to be taken care of so I really had to um, uh, to make sure things would you know were fine with all of them and uh, Ola was amazing she was really smart and you know quite easy to handle for a horse of her kind because she's quite um, let's say fresh <laughs> and uh, and I was really surprised so she she did absolutely awesome uh, on the on this trip and that was the first one and then when I left for Finland two years ago and I was like, oh, I'm going to go for six or six months about, I don't want to leave her here in Switzerland without me. And so I asked her, do you want to come? And the answer was like, of course I'm coming, I'm not staying here. And, um, and she came and we went together and the trip was, yeah, that was fine. Um, you can see videos on the other channel. Uh, I, you can see the video, I put the link there on this trip. Um, I also drove back with her um, last year and because she didn't want to stay in Finland alone because I said, I, I don't know when I'm coming back to Finland, do you want to stay here? And I found someone to take care of you, do you want to come back? And the answer was like, no, back. And same, the trip was just amazing. She was, you know, we camp outside. I just put a little fence with, with some ropes and poles and just very light stuff and she stays in the so, I mean, she's so easy and at night she wants to come back in the trailer to sleep. She prefers to be in the small, uh, a small space. She feels more secure. So that's it. And sometimes Bobby stayed outside with her and she liked it too, but she doesn't want to be alone outside. 
Uh, we had another trip where she came also, same way, super easy to Finland. I was alone again with just Bobby and her. And um, that was just amazing trip. Again, I had, you know, no issue at all. She was loading the trailer alone. Um, Bobby was just jumping his box alone. So they were just a dream to be with. And when this um, this spring, I decided to come back to Switzerland for just two months. I asked her because I had a doubt that it was worth her coming back for such a short time. And uh, and actually, um, she was she was happy where she was, and I couldn't feel that she wanted to come back. So I just double check, double check. At the last minute, I found an arrangement with the people of the stables, and they said it's fine. You can leave her here. She's going to be okay. Uh, she would go to the field at, during the day and back to her stable in the, in her pen during the night. I'm in contact with these people on a regular basis, and I talk to Ola, check with her if she's fine every day. And she's chill. She's she's really enjoying it. She has a new friend, and uh, so I'm I'm really happy that actually things turn out this way. But if you listen to your animals when you plan a trip, um, you can really feel if they're happy to come, or and if they're not, why? Is there any resistance, and what are the reason? Um, my advice is not to put your own fear. In your animals, don't um, just try to make the difference. What are your fears and what are their fears or insecurities? Because often it's not exactly the same. So it's good to to double check with yourself. Do I have any doubt? Do I have any belief? Or am I? I don't know. Am I scared that my animal is not going to handle it fine? And then you can talk and check with your animal, like you know, going into that meditative state where you can really ask the question and, and feel here, understand the answer from your animal. But honestly, they love to travel. Most of them love to. And if they don't, they make it very clear, like really, really clear. So um, yeah, don't hesitate. If you have a trip, you want to go somewhere, make sure you do everything you have to be able to travel, like all the, the administrative work, the vaccinations, make sure the papers are in order so you don't get any trouble at customs or things like this but then um, if you have prepared your animal you've told them what you want to do and you've trained them to go into the space the box the it can be a, a basket whatever you're going to use to to take them with you they're going to be amazingly fine so thanks for watching today you can like it if you want subscribe and uh, share if you think this video can be useful to other people who want to travel with their animals and pets. So have an amazing day. I'll catch you soon. Bye.